gentlemen, my name is Calvin Robards, and today I'm here to talk to you about something that's inspired me. My sixth grade module, Sustainable Solutions, Sustainable Cities. Now let me tell you, this isn't like any regular module you've ever heard of. It was probably one of the coolest ones I've ever done. The module started with our sixth grade teacher, Caroline, asking us to calculate our carbon footprint, because we needed to know how much of Earth's resources we used up in our everyday lives. To do this, we consider the types of buildings we live in and the ways we get from place to place. For example, do you walk or do you, do you travel by car or do you walk? We also talked about our diets and where our food comes from. Does it come from a local farmer's market or from far away? As it turns out, if people all around the world lived a lifestyle like mine, it would take the resources of 5.2 Earths, which clearly we don't have. We have one Earth and we need to start making some changes so this one lasts. So here's our module's essential question. How can MSC students design sustainable um, buildings to meet the needs of New York City's growing population? Or in other words, how do we build the modern, eco-friendly, sustainable cities of the future? To answer this question, we began studying the major problems of designing an urban city. Too often, water, space, materials, and energy are wasted with poor design, abandoned buildings, and greed. So how do we fix this? This is the question my classmates and I will be talking to you about today. We will be doing that by explaining the buildings we've designed. You see, in order to create sustainable buildings, we need to think about the way we design them. In our module, groups of students were asked to create their own modern, eco-friendly buildings of the future, like a library, stadium, apartment building, or a grocery store. We also built prototypes of these buildings in class using recycled everyday materials like cardboard, plastic, and styrofoam. So how did we come up with the ideas for these buildings? We went on trips to explore about water treatment and bathroom waste. Have you ever heard of a, di of a digester egg? They're huge eggs that store all the bathroom waste. There are eight in Brooklyn that process as much as 1.5 million gallons of human waste every day. Sometimes when it rains, eggs overflow, which, which spills out all the waste onto the streets of New York. Disgusting, right? We also visited a modern materials factory that makes eco-friendly countertops out of recycled glass and cement. Then we looked at urban farms like the Brooklyn Grange, which is soil-based, and the hydroponic greenhouse on my school's roof. And it doesn't end there. Green architects from around the city came into our classroom to teach us about the buildings they've designed around the world. Now, I won't talk too much about all the incredible things we learned. I'll leave that for my classmates, but I will say that our weekly lessons on energy, waste, water, building materials, and space have changed my perspective on sustainability and what's possible. I hope these presentations change yours as well. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hi everyone, my name is Isabel Gann, and I'm going to talk to you about waste. When I was younger, the most I knew about the garbage I threw away was that I was taking by these big trucks to a faraway place. In reality, garbage goes to two different places, landfills and incinerators. Landfills are holes dug in the ground, lined with sheets of plastic, and filled with a mixture of soil and garbage. Do you know that a landfill is considered sanitary if it's topped off with a new layer of soil every day? Sometimes we build litter. It goes to the biggest landfill in the world called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. This landfill is even on land. It's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Fish eat the plastic, which is 90% of the whole body of garbage, and get sick. And then their predators eat them and get sick. It goes all the way up the food chain and might even be in the seafood we eat. Incinerators are places where the garbage is burned. Some garbage when burn releases a chemical called carcinogen, which bears the crime of causing cancer, birth defects, and diabetes to people in the area. Isn't this terrible? No need to get upset, for there are some solutions to these problems too. Me and some of my peers built a sustainable movie theater. We put compost bins and recycling bins instead of putting all garbage cans everywhere. In case you don't know, compost is a mixture of soil, newspaper, and food scraps. Then, the FBI, which stands for fungus, bacteria, and insects, eat the food and turns it into fertilized soil that we can use for farms or your very own garden. Recycling is more simple. It's the process of turning recycled materials into new things we can use again. 
such as grocery bags. In fact, many grocery stores and drugstores across New York City do this. The compost bins are for all the excess food that people don't want to eat, which eliminates unwanted popcorn and candy in their seats. The recycling bins are for all the paper and plastic, which we then take to a grocery store to be made into flashy new grocery bags. I hope you take these ideas into consideration. Have a great day. Hello, my name is Ned McCobrey, and today I'm here to talk about one of our generation's biggest problems. That problem is the waste and pollution of our planet's water supply. This all started about two months ago when in science, we started working on eco-friendly buildings, and my group's building was the apartment building. And then I learned a lot about how we waste our water in the earth. Like, the, like these images, when we throw away our garbage, we put it in the bags which goes on the trucks, which are taken to giant landfills. But what happens then is the wind will blow the garbage out of the landfills and into the water, and when the garbage ends up in the water, not only does it kill the fish, but it makes the water undrinkable for us. But there are, and, the, and it causes dirty drinking water too. But there are solutions for these problems. In our new building, we, uh, the building is only going to be less than six floors, so the water can go on just gravity alone without having to use any energy. And we have a rain catcher, which can actually give some of the water for some of the building, which is, can be very helpful. And behind us, you see what clean water is. But this is what we can do. This is what we do to our water. So I think we need to really work on improving our water, water supply. If every building in New York did at least one of these things, we could save a tremendous amount of water. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Mila Smith, and I'm here to talk to you on the subject of open space and design. Once upon a time, here in America, it looked a lot like this, with space everywhere. In fact, during the Western expansion, you could go get acres of space for free, as long as you got there first. Well, after a while, America started looking less like this and more like this. You, I think you've guessed my point, that we are running out of space. In New York City alone, there are eight million people and counting, but it's not even the most populated city on the world. That would be Shanghai in China, with over 17 million people. And you thought New York City was crowded. Now, with so many people, it's almost impossible to fit everyone and everything into one city. Along with space alone that we're running out of, we have a lack of green space. See this map right here? You can barely see all the parks and gardens on that map. Without parks and gardens, we don't have many trees, animals, or plants in our cities. That's another problem. One thing that we're doing is we're wasting space, like in abandoned buildings. There's a movie theater in my neighborhood that has been abandoned for years. It wasn't used as an apartment building or a restaurant or anything useful. It's just been sitting there, taking up space. We're also not using space like we could. There's space underground, on the walls, and even in the air that we just are not using. There's enough space if we are creative. Now, in my grocery store that we were working on in class, we had one solution called fishy walls. It's where there are walls made of glass and you put fish and water in, sort of like an aquarium, only they create energy. How so? Well, there's a theory underwater vibrations and currents can make energy. So when the fish swim and they vibrate special metal poles, they create energy. Now that's using space wisely. Another solution is something called kinetic plates. This is a grocery store in England that uses kinetic plates. They're plates put in the ground, and when pressure is put on them, that pressure and friction is used to create energy. So that's using space wisely, using sidewalks, under the sidewalks, in the floors, in the stairs, and maybe even in doors. Now, finally, as we talked about earlier, there's indoor farming. See, 
farming on the walls and hanging in the air. This is using space we don't usually use for our grocery store so we can have plants and food right there in the store instead of having to pay tons of money to get all that food transported from across the country. I hope you'll help me take these ideas into consideration and make buildings more like this that will help save the world. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Sophie and my group is building a model of a green library. And in my group, I'm in charge of energy and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so there are many different kinds of problems with energy usage, but the main one is that it's wasting fossil fuels. Now fossil fuels are the things like gas and oil and coal, which we use to make electricity and to power almost everything. And the reason why it's a bad thing to waste fossil fuels is because they're a finite resource, which means that once they're used, they're gone. But the bigger problem with this is one of the ways the fossil fuels are collected. It's called hydraulic fracturing, or fracking. Fracking is when they drill from 8 to 11,000 feet deep into the ground and suck up all the fuels from under the Earth's surface. This sounds okay, right? Well, it's not at all, because the drilling creates cracks, and the cracks carry the chemicals used to frack into the water in the ground that will later become drinking water for the cities and towns nearby. Now, I really don't think that you'd want to sit down and drink a glass of water that had over 650 different types of chemicals in it. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And some people have found that they could actually light their tap water on fire. I've never heard of such a thing. It's because of all the chemicals used to frack that have polluted the water. It's horrible and not even necessary. But there are solutions for this, two of which would be using solar power or wind power. Wind power would be using wind turbines. Wind turbines are these things that look like giant windmills that you can sometimes see on the side of a highway on a wind farm. How a wind turbine works is that the, wind, the force of the wind spins the turbine, which spins a generator creating electricity. A generator is made of a magnet and wire coils. When the magnet spins within the wire coils, the electrons within the wire coils spin too. When electrons move, it creates electricity. And solar power would be using solar panels. Solar panels can be put on tops of roofs and tall structures and harness the sun's energy. Though this is 100% green and wonderful to use, it only captures 15 to 20% of the sun's energy. Solar panels are made of stripped silicone that is placed under non-reflective glass to create photovoltaic, or PV, panels that collect the sun's photons, or energy, and convert it into electricity. Now, I have some personal solutions that I'm going to share with you. One of my ideas is to hook up a generator to each door of a building. And whenever that door is opened or closed, it spins a generator, which creates electricity. And another one of my ideas, well, I know that some people read while they exercise. So I had the idea, since I'm building the green library, to put exercise machines in a section of the library that people could use for free. And when the pedals of the, when the, pedals of the machines are used in turning, it spins a generator inside the machine that creates electricity. Now, one last idea, and this one might be a little strange, are these things called button steps that my friend Zonthi and I came up with. Button steps are like regular stairs, except each one has a kinetic plate inside. So, when the weight of a person pushes down the step, it pushes down the kinetic plate, which throws a lever, which turns a flywheel, and the flywheel spins, acting like a generator creating electricity. And with these combined energy sources, it could power the whole building, and maybe even two. This helps save fossil fuels and prevents fracking, as well as being 100% green. So, over the past few months, I've been learning about building sustainable cities with my teacher, Caroline, and all of the guests that have come into our classroom and have talked to us. And I found it extremely interesting and very fun. And I hope what I've told you has helped you understand the problems and solutions with energy usage. Thanks. <laughs> Elizabeth and I'm here to talk to you today about materials and how to use sustainable building materials in sustainable ways that can be solutions to the problems with the environment. There are many problems with the environment, some that just need special environmentally friendly materials. Lots of these problems have to do with almost all the systems, especially waste. One problem would be advertising. We've all heard of advertisements, right? The advertising people always say, buy this, buy that, buy new things. And then before a blink of an eye, it's broken. And all you think you have left to do is throw it away. 
Oh, it's okay, I have 244 more choices to choose from today. I thought that too, when I was little. And it keeps us tempted to buy more new items instead of reusing what you already have. Another concern would be that we're interfering too much with our resources, such as trees. We're using too many trees, cutting too many down. And trees, as you all know, we need to breathe. Another main concern would be landfills. Most people, when they redo an apartment, let their old materials go to waste, leaving them in a landfill. If too much treated wood goes in a landfill, it can cause water pollution. Trash can blow from the landfill into the ocean, leaving animals to eat it and die. Scary to see that sight, isn't it? But don't panic yet. There can be many creative solutions that don't harm the environment if we put on our thinking cap. Our group did this for our building, a library. We used many different materials in many different eco-friendly ways. For example, I got incredibly interested in ice stuff, a material that is made of recycled glass and concrete. Ice stone is smooth, hard, and long-lasting. This is why we used it in our building as a countertop. Furthermore, if you hate seeing or knowing a tree was cut down, it's safe to take a trip to our library. We use recycled wood for our covered bookshelves. The cover protects the books from the sunlight streaming through the clear solar panels. My friend Zeke came up with this idea, and I thought it was a really good idea. I was inspired, taking notes about almost all the different sustainable building materials. You, I learned that you can use raw materials to make other functional structures, such as parts of cars can be twisted to make a sustainable structure. And you can even use small items like bottle caps and soda tabs to create a special design, like a peace sign. I'm hoping you can take consideration to these ideas. So let's aim on a path away from waste and towards sustainable building materials. One step for humankind is equal to a giant leap for greenkind. Thank you.